we welcome you to St. Carthage's Cathedral for the celebration of Mass. Today the church celebrates Easter Sunday. Would you please stand and join in singing the entrance hymn, Christ the Lord is risen today. You'll find the words on the printed hymn sheet. of the Father, the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. Today being Easter Sunday, I have the special authorization of our Holy Father, the Pope, to give you the apostolic blessing, which carries with it a plenary indulgence. So I invite you now to, in your hearts, to confess your sins, so that I may give you this at the end of Mass.
Lord Jesus, you are mighty God and Prince of Peace, Lord have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You are Son of God and Son of Mary, Christ of mercy. You are Word made flesh and splendor of the Father, Lord have mercy. And may the blessed Mary ever virgin, blessed Michael the Archangel, blessed John the Baptist and the holy apostles, Peter and Paul, and all the saints assist you with their merits and prayers. And may almighty and merciful God forgive you and free you from all your sins. May he help you to persevere in fruitful penance and good example and sincere charity and lead you to everlasting life. Amen. God, who on this day, through your only begotten Son, have conquered death and unlocked for us the path to eternity, grant that we who keep the solemnity of the Lord's resurrection may through the renewal brought by your Spirit rise up in the light of life to our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Peter addressed Cornelius and his household. You must have heard about the recent happenings in Judea, about Jesus of Nazareth, and how he began in Galilee after John had been preaching baptism. God had anointed him with the Holy Spirit and with power and because God was with him, Jesus went about doing good and curing all who had fallen into the power of the devil. Now I and those with me can witness to everything he did throughout the countryside of Judea and in Jerusalem itself, and also to the fact that they killed him by hanging him on a tree. Yet three days afterwards, God raised him to life and allowed him to be seen, not by the whole people, but only by certain witnesses God had chosen beforehand. Now we are those witnesses. 
We have eaten and drunk with him after his resurrection from the dead. And he has ordered us to proclaim this to his people and to tell them that God has appointed him to judge everyone, alive or dead. It is to him that all the prophets bear this witness, that all who believe in Jesus will have their sins forgiven through his name. The word of the Lord. from the letter of St. Paul to the Colossians. Since you've been brought back to true life with Christ, you must look for the things that are in heaven, where Christ is, sitting at God's right hand. Let your thoughts be on heavenly things, not on the things that are on the earth, because you have died and now the life you have is hidden with Christ in God. But when Christ is revealed and he is your life, you too will be revealed in all your glory with him. The word of the Lord. Please stand to welcome the gospel. Could you please join in singing? the sequence, O Flock of Christ, you'll find the words on the printed hymn sheet, and you may sit.
welcome the gospel. It was very early on the first day of the week and still dark when Mary of Magdala came to the tomb. She saw that the stone had been moved away from the tomb and came running to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one Jesus loved. They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, she said, and we don't know where they have put him. So Peter set out with the other disciple to go to the tomb. They ran together, but the other disciple, running faster than Peter, reached the tomb first. He bent down and saw the linen cloths lying on the ground, but did not go in. Simon Peter, who was following, now came up, went right into the tomb, saw the linen cloths on the ground, and also the cloth that had been over his head. This was not with the linen cloths, but rolled up in a place by itself. Then the other disciple, who had reached the tomb first, also went in. He saw and he believed. Till this moment, they had failed to understand the teaching of scripture, that he must rise from the dead. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. My dear Father, and I remember very clearly talking with him as he was approaching death. And one thing he said to me, he said, son, one thing I long for is to taste the food that my mother used to cook for me. And I thought to myself, if only I could, or mum or someone could cook something that tasted just like his mother's cooking, we would have done that immediately. But on hindsight, I know what he was really speaking about. He was speaking about the love of his mother and the memory of his mother's love given to him so often in the special things that she would cook for my father. Today's gospel is the one gospel in which we begin to recognize what Jesus' life and mission was about, and we begin to understand what Easter is about. 
people arrive at the tomb of Jesus, Mary of Magdala, the one who television series and things like that say was the person closest to Jesus. Peter, the one on whom he founded the church, and John, the beloved disciple, they all arrive and they go into the tomb and have a look. Mary goes into the tomb and she doesn't understand. She has no idea what happens. And we will see in the Gospels that follow, she goes outside looking for the body of Jesus. Peter goes into the tomb and walks out without having any understanding of what's happened, quite perplexed. And John goes into the tomb, and we must remember what is in the tomb, according to John's Gospel, simply the linen cloths that had wrapped the body of Christ. There is nothing in the tomb except these things. But unlike Mary of Magdala, who goes looking for the body, and unlike Peter, who has no idea what's happened, John sees nothing, and he believes that the Lord is risen. This is perhaps the most powerful moment in the passion and death of our Lord Jesus Christ, in many ways one of the most powerful moments in the whole of the gospel because while John sees nothing something happens so that he believes I think this moment is much like what it would have been if I could have brought to my father his mother's cooking because even without seeing his mother he would have said my mother is here not simply because I can taste my mother's cooking, but I experience here and now my mother's love. That was what my father was talking about as he was dying. This is what John recognizes. John goes in and sees nothing, and yet he believes. He sees nothing and believes, and the third thing necessary is love. Because of his love, he recognizes in this empty tomb that the one that he loves, in fact, is risen. It doesn't mean that Peter doesn't love him, nor does Mary Magdalene not love him. It's just that their love is not as pure and complete as that of John the Evangelist. What does this tell us about this great day? It's a day that we recognize, understand, and have as part of our lives simply because of love. People say, you believe, that's your faith. I believe he is risen because I love him. And that is what all Christians should be able to say. Otherwise, to say that I believe, what makes your belief different to another's belief? But today's gospel shows us what really is the foundation of Christianity. Not a set of beliefs, but love of Jesus Christ. And as we will see as the year unfolds, love of Jesus Christ begins to reveal and manifest what we believe. Because our faith is built on love of Jesus Christ. Take this teaching into your own lives and recognize through love, not by what you see, not by what you hear, not by what you expect, but learn to have the sensitivity to recognize and appreciate the love that others have for you. If you expect the love to be shown in certain ways, I pray you will be disappointed because you're not looking for, for love. You're looking for something that you want for yourself. But if we could simply see and experience the beauty of love, then like John this morning, we will be filled with the risen Christ. I wish you all a very happy and blessed Easter. But above all else, I wish you the love of Christ. And I pray that you would experience that love 
and in experiencing it, be able to identify love wherever it is. And when we do that, we will, be, we will realize that we are surrounded by love. The problem is, love so often is not the way that we expect or want. So let's let this Easter experience change us, to awaken us to the beauty of love. Now please stand because this being Easter Sunday, we don't have the creed, but we have the renewal of our baptismal promises and a statement of what we believe. My dear brothers and sisters, through the Paschal mystery, we have been buried with Christ in baptism so that we may walk with him in newness of life. And so now that our Lenten observance is concluded, let us renew the promises of our holy baptism by which we once renounce Satan and his works and promise to serve God in the Holy Catholic Church. And so I ask you, do you renounce sin so as to live in the freedom of the children of God? I do. I do. do you renounce the lure of evil so that sin may have no mastery over you? I do. Do you renounce Satan, the author and prince of sin? I do. Do you believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth? I do. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was born of the Virgin Mary, suffered death and was buried, rose again from the dead, and is seated at the right hand of the Father? I do. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body and life everlasting. I do. And may Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given us new birth by water and the Holy Spirit and bestowed on us forgiveness of our sins, keep us by his grace in Christ Jesus our Lord for eternal life. Amen.
Let us place our needs before God our Father joyfully, because Christ has triumphed over death and entered into glory. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have dedicated their lives to God, that they may look for the things that are in heaven and be Christ's witnesses in the world. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those unjustly deprived of their freedom, that they may draw fresh hope of freedom from the mystery of the resurrection. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the family of God gathered here in Easter joy, that we may bear witness to the risen Christ and reflect him in our lives. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are sick and bereaved, that they may receive healing and acceptance through Christ and the intercessions of St. Mary of the Cross. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died, that they may rise to eternal life in Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we make these and all our prayers through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.
sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. Exultant with paschal gladness, O Lord, we offer the sacrifice by which your church is wondrously reborn and nourished through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift your heart, Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right it is truly right and just our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but on this day, above all, to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For he is the true Lamb who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying he has destroyed our death and by rising restored our life. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts Sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim, Holy, 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 Holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven. Thank Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. <clears throat> The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection. <clears throat> Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis Apo and Gregory Bishop and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us, all we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be coerced to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours for ever and ever. At the Saviour's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, 
Our Father, <coughs> hallowed be thy name. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, <coughs> and lead us not into temptation. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof. Say the word of my soul.
let us pray. O God, look upon your church with unfailing love and favour, so that renewed by the Paschal mysteries, she may come to the glory of the resurrection through Christ our Lord. Amen. And just before I give the, um, the special papal blessing, thank you so much for coming to Easter Mass. My only complaint was Holy Communion took a long time, but it's wonderful to have so many people coming to Communion. It's a good complaint to have. I welcome you all and I thank you all for being here. It's the joy of the Bishop to see people praising God because my only desire is that we praise and love God so that we might love each other. And I see that happening here today. Many of you I probably won't see again till Christmas or to Easter next year. But don't by that feel any less of a Catholic than I am. Who knows in God's sight what is pleasing? Is the bishop more pleasing to God or you who are here this Easter Sunday and may not be back to next Easter? It is not for me to judge simply to say, by being here, each of you gives joy to God. And by being here, each of you puts up your hand and in the eyes of God stands here as a Catholic and a good Catholic. So I thank you for being here. I look forward to seeing you whenever I see you again. And now I want to give you all the special blessing. liturgical year, the Holy Father grants to our Bishop the right and privilege to bestow the papal blessing. <clears throat> Accordingly, the Most Reverend Father Gregory, by the grace of God and the Apostolic See, Bishop of this Holy Church of Lismore, will now give the Apostolic blessing with the plenary indulgence in the name of the Roman Pontiff to all present who are truly penitent and have confessed their sins and received Holy Communion. Pray to God, therefore, for our Most Holy Father, Pope Francis, our Bishop Gregory, and for our Holy Mother, the Catholic Church, and strive by holiness of life to walk in full communion with her. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow your heads and pray for God's blessing. May God, who by the resurrection of his only begotten Son was pleased to confer on you the gift of redemption and of adoption, give you gladness by his blessing. Amen. May he, by whose redeeming work you have received the gift of everlasting freedom, make you heirs to an eternal inheritance. Amen. And may you, who have already risen with Christ in baptism through faith, by living in a right manner on this earth, be united with him in the homeland of heaven. Amen. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in the peace of Christ. Alleluia.